Hello and welcome to the part 5 of our buffer overflow module. In the last part, we enhanced our POC to take control of the EIP register and we redirected the execution flow to the ESP register. In this part, we'll use our POC to identify the bad characters that would enable us to send a proper payload to the application. So these are the some software I am assuming that you as a learner have a prerequisite knowledge of or rather basic knowledge of. If you want to learn more about these software or you want to learn uh, the software from scratch, please check out the resources at the end of this video. And we are on the part 5 that is bad character analysis of a module. So uh, what does bad character analysis entail? It entails sending all possible characters from x00 to hex ff as part of a buffer and see how these characters are dealt by the application after the after it has crashed do remember that we send the applications hex characters and not the ascii characters by default uh, hex00 is considered as a bad character because it represents a null byte which breaks our buffer so let's take this to the lab so here I have the POC from the last part of a module. Now I'll copy these bad characters from hex 00 to hex ff to our POC. And paste it here. And what I'll do is to save some time, I'll remove hex 00 as we know that it is a bad character by default being a null byte. Let me just put this line before our evil string. Yeah. Now I'll replace these C's with this bad characters variable. I press save and uh, I'll now send this POC or rather this uh, new evil string to our float FTP server, which I have running on the Windows XP machine, as you can see here. So just let me open up a terminal. Yeah. So now I'll send this POC to the float FTP server. And uh, let's move back to our machine. The application has crashed and access violation has occurred and let's follow the esp register into uh, sorry let's follow the esp register in dump and uh, right so as you can see that here are the a's and uh, this is the EIP address that we mentioned and here is the beginning of the bad character variable that we sent to the port FTP server. So we have 0, 1, 2, 4, 8, 0, 9 and after 0, 9 we have 27. So that means whatever character was there after 0, 9 has broken our shell code for now. So we'll remove this character and we'll send the uh, string again to the application and see how the application treats the new string. So let me just restart the float FTP server here. Yes. And you are running. Let's move back to a Kali machine. And uh, so after 0, 09, we have 0 A as a character. I'll just remove it, save a POC, and uh, send it to the application again. And let's move back to the Kali machine crashed access violation let's follow the ESP in dump all right so here we have 0 9 we have skipped 0 a now 0 B 0 C so after 0 C we again have 27 so whatever character was there after 0 C has crashed our shell code so I'll restart the float FTP server here Uh, 
go back to our Kali machine, update our POC to remove the character whatever was there after 0C. So this is the 0D character. And uh, for my record, I'll just put a list of bad characters here. And uh, x00, x0A, and uh, x0D for now. Save it. Send it to the application again. And let's see what happened this time. Application has paused. Access violation has occurred. Let's follow ESP in dump. And uh, move a little bit. So from 0, 01, uh, and if you just glance through it, you know that nothing has been broken here so far. And if we have character still FF, that means our string has uh, gone to the application as it should. So we have FE and FF. Great. So that means that only those three were the bad characters. For this application now we'll use these bad characters when we'll generate the shell code in the next part of this module so now let's see what these bad characters represent or why these characters are bad for this particular application so we identified hex 00 hex 0a and hex 0d as bad characters now these characters when they're converted to ascii they translate into a null byte a line feed and carriage return respectively so a null byte is a global terminator and hence it truncates a buffer and uh, if a buffer gets truncated so anything that is after this character gets mangled up and it breaks our shell code. Same thing happens with the line feed and the carriage return. It truncates a buffer and breaks our shell code and hence they are treated as a bad character in this case. So in the next part we will use these bad characters to generate a shell code update our POC with that shell code, send the new POC to the application and obtain a shell from that machine. So these are the learning resources you can use to learn more about the software that we are using in this module or to learn more about the techniques that we are using in this module. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next part. Meanwhile, please subscribe to our channel Yaksha's CSC and follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is Yaksha's443. Now, if you want the files for this module, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and tweet about this buffer overflow module and mention our handle that is at the rate yaksha's443 so that we know that we have tweeted about us. And once we receive your tweet, we'll send you a link to download these files via Twitter DM. Thank you and I'll see you in the next part.